I've got the completed long division on the board and there's a couple of things I want you to notice. If you have a close look at what I've worked here and you compare it to yours, for almost all of you, you might be tempted to look at my working and say, Mr. Wu, you are cheating. That's not what I'm supposed to divide by. That's not the original function. Did you notice? I'm not dividing through by, I'm not dividing rather, minus x cubed minus 6x squared plus x plus 30. That's not what I'm dividing. I'm dividing something else. I'm dividing exactly the opposite of that. You might say, that's not fair. Like, I had to deal with all these minus signs, and they were gross and difficult, right? Well, I know that about myself, that I often make you know, mistakes you know, doing, um, when I'm dealing with all of these minus signs. There's so many minus signs. There's lots of, you're subtracting minus signs. You're just kind of asking for it, right? Um, this is like, like, I often do a lot of travel, and so I know to pack the day before I need to go somewhere. Even if I am leaving in the evening, I'll still pack the night before, because I know what happens to my stupid brain when I pack on the day I have to leave. I always forget something, every time, right? So part of being a sound mathematician is knowing methods that are error prone and knowing what to do, what strategy to take to avoid those error prone methods. Can you see on my first line of working what I did? What did I do? The yeah, yeah, that negative that's like causing problems for me, I just factored it out. Now it hasn't disappeared. I'm gonna return to it later on, okay? But what I've done is taken it out of the running for when I'm actually doing the division and there's just far less chance for me to make mistakes. Do you all agree with my quotient that I've ended up with in my remainder? Thumbs up? So, at this point, this is actually the hardest part of it. I can now use this division to say y is not just equal to that thing that we started with, but minus sign out the front, because that's what I did on my first line, and now I can write the factorization that I came up with from my divisor and my quotient. So here they go, x plus 3, x squared plus 3, x minus 10. Who's already factorized the quadratic? Yeah, go ahead, Pam. Uh, it's x, x plus 3, x minus 2, and x plus 4. Yeah, that's right. Do I have some agreement from everyone? That's very yep, nice. thumbs up. Good job. Very happy, right. okay. We've got strange approval, so we know we're in a good spot. Okay, great. Now, <laughs> You might notice at this point, we have something very similar to what we had before. It's all nice and neatly factorized, so I can read off immediately what the three roots that I'm expecting are. Can anyone tell me what they are? Yeah, negative three, negative five, and two. Okay, so, so I've got all the roots, but the one difference between this guy and the other one, apart from the values is, there's that negative out the front. Now do you remember, we looked at these two, which are kind of our stereotypical cubic graphs. Not every graph looks exactly like these, but the vast majority. This minus sign at the front, which one am I now dealing with? It's, the, it's this guy, right? Sorry, I had to draw them and re redo them, and that's why they're in reverse order. I know it's the bottom one because when you start putting in some huge values into this, right, like x equals 100 or x equals 1000, you get really big numbers and then a minus sign hanging out the front. So you get like negative a million, negative a billion. You are dropping off the bottom of this cliff, right? So that's why you know it's going to be this one. And from here, all that needs to be done is to pop everything onto a Cartesian plane. So I didn't draw enough of the left-hand side. I'm going to fix that. That's better. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two. Do please make sure that when you're plotting your X intercepts that you have like a decent set of scale there. That's actually one of the things we particularly look for. I'm going to go all the way through here. I'm going to draw a nice neat curve, except I've got to start high and I'm going to end low. Okay, so I'm getting something, I guess, like this. Beautiful. I've done better, but I'm happy with that. Okay, I um, should also put those values on. What's my Y intercept? Minus 10. Minus 10. Oh, 10. 30. 7, 30. 30. 40, 30. I could get them to vote, couldn't I? Uh, it's a, I, 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 it's a, <laughs> it's a, well, how do we usually find, for anything, how do we find a y-intercept? We let, we let x equal 0, right? And when you put x equal 0 into our original function, and that's probably the easiest one, right? You could put x equal 0 into any of these, but I think that's the most obvious one, because Bam, 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 they all disappear. Right. You end up with our positive that's 30, crazy. okay? So there, that's our 30 Dunskys, okay? 
Now, for number three, I'm actually going to skip forward a little bit because I notice a few of you have actually given it a go already. And you've actually gone to a factorization. You've got, done your division, right? And then you've got, what is it? x plus 2. What is the quadratic you ended up with as the other factor? Has anyone already got it? I'm sure, yeah. Oh, yeah, on this one? Yeah. So when you want to name, so when, you know when you name the graph, should we put y equals minus x plus 3? That's a great question. Okay, so if you didn't catch Ishan's question, Ishan was asking, if you label this graph, what should we label it as? Like, should we label it as this, or that, or, or which one? The short answer is, it actually doesn't matter. Because they are all, the whole point of us doing this is they are all the same equation. Um, just out of instinct, I would probably just label it in the way they gave it to me. So I would label it as minus x cubed minus 6x squared plus x plus 30. That's my instinct. But honestly, because they're all equivalent, it's fine, whichever you choose. Okay, good question. Did someone else, has someone got the other factor on here? I know a few of you have already calculated it. Is anyone willing to share it with me? It starts with an x squared minus x plus 1. Thank you very much, Jermaine. So I want you all now, regardless of whether you've done this question or not, just look at this with me. Okay? This is what happens after you go all the way through the long division. I'm not going to rehearse that for you. I think you're fine with it. But what's different about this question? Have a look at x squared minus x plus 1. Just stare really hard at that for me. What's the factorization of that guy? X plus 1 X plus 1, X plus shaking her head at me. Shimabi, why are you shaking your head at me? So, say it nice and loud so we can all hear. Is, is, this, is this a perfect square? You can't divide it. You can't do it. It's very close to a perfect square. Um, what would I change this number into to make it a perfect square? I need a negative 2, right? And then I could factorize that. That'd be fine. This is not that, though. What is the factorization? Oh, this guy doesn't want to be factorized, at least not with the tools that we have, right? You can try and complete the square on this guy, you can try and put the quadratic formula. The way I know, in fact, the way I crafted this question was, I want you to think back to this guy. What is this? This is the discriminant, right? For this, just the quadratic, just look at the quadratic, right? What is the discriminant going to be for that particular quadratic? I start with, what's the first thing in the discriminant? B squared, in this case, B squared is 1, because negative 1 times negative 1. Then I get, what? What comes after the B squared? Minus 4 AC. Now in this case, A and C are both 1. So minus 4 AC is just minus 4. And I don't even need to work out what that number is. I already know it's negative. This doesn't have, this doesn't have real roots. Okay? Now what does that mean? I can't do, like it says, divide by the given factor, complete the factorization. That's the complete factorization. So you're like, mm, what am I supposed to do? I've got one root from this. It's negative 2. And I don't have any roots from this. What does that mean for the graph? So in the previous ones, right, we found two, uh, sorry, three x-intercepts. We found three for the other one. You found one here. That's because that's the only one. There's only a single x-intercept. Okay? So I invite you now, if you haven't already, draw yourself up that third set of axes, please. You can do this with me together. Third set of axes, please. We've already determined where that x-intercept is, so I'm going to go negative 1, negative 2. So I'm going to, where's that going to go? I'll chuck that value there. Because I've got no more x-intercepts, I'm like, oh, that's all I have at the moment. I feel like I need more information here, right? What other piece of information can you work out easily? I've got an x-intercept. I can work out a y-intercept. What is it? It's just positive 2, right? Because all of these terms are just going to become 0 when you substitute in x equals 0. So let's put plus 2 here. I still feel like I don't have very much about this, right? Like I've just got these two spots. I feel like I need more information, right? Would someone like to give me a suggestion for a value I could try out? Anyone want to suggest? I could try in x equals 1. That's a nice easy number to put. Uh, that's 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 2. The one and minus one in the middle, they're going to cancel out. So you're just going to get one plus two. What's that? Three. Three. So that's somewhere like, if I said that's one, that's three. There you go. Now you can, you can keep going. You get some more information on this. I know I'm roughly going to get which of these shapes, top or bottom? Bottom. Top, top, top. This guy here, because it's the, look at the number in front of the x cubed. Do you see that? 
that's the real key. In fact, it's so important we give it a name. We call it the leading coefficient. Uh, it's positive. That's right. So if it were negative, it would go down, but it's positive. Okay. So you're going to get a shape that's kind of... I actually think... I'd love you to just chuck this into Desmos, but... I think you're getting a shape like this. Okay. Now I actually need some more information to know exactly where this wiggles around. I don't know where that is at the moment. Um, but you can, at the moment, the only tool we've got is to throw a few more points in there, honestly, to find out what's going on. Okay.